Good day and welcome to Eau Claire Evangelical Missionary Church's online message. This happens to be for April uh, 19th, 2021. Don't let the date bother you. Listen to what the Holy Spirit's speaking to you. Listen to the Word of God. And uh, we're correctly, we are learning how to correctly handle the Word of Truth here in Eau Claire. Learned about different letters and how we read those letters in the New Testament. Uh, we read about some of the main core ideas that are found in all four of the Gospel accounts of Jesus. Um, and if they're in all four, there's something really important. Repetition is in, important in the Bible. When something is being repeated, it's like God's putting an exclamation point on something. They didn't have exclamation points in ancient Hebrew and, and Old Greek, so they repeated themselves to make sure that the emphasis was there. So you got, this is an important part. And you know, we still do that today sometimes, uh, especially when we're teaching children. We, are, we can be repetitive just to make sure that this is really sinking in. And God has done the same thing in the Word of God. Right now, what we're looking at is poetry, because there's a lot of poetry in the Bible. Up to a third of the Bible could really be poetry. And last week, we looked at sad poetry and a, and a few of the different Psalms. Now, Psalms is a different book. Psalms is not like reading a letter where when I get a letter written to me, there's no chapter and verse, and I want to read the whole thing. But in the Psalms, there are 150 different uh, poetical uh, verses, uh, songs, really, in many cases. But there's 150 different poetical songs that uh, you can go through and they are different so if you're reading psalm one stop take a break before you start getting to psalm number two and they're numbered for us so that it's easier to track where we are and some of them are really short like two verses short really you read it that fast then there's some that are pretty long there's a few that uh like psalm 119 is is 176 verses it'll it'll take you a good 15 20 minutes at least to read it um, but today we're going to be looking at a specific type of psalm, a specific type of image that God gives us. And that image is the strength of a refuge. He is a stronghold, a fortress that we can take refuge in. And we're going to look at different imagery that is with that. Now, part of that really speaks to the time that we live in. It is a time where there is a lot more fear. There is a lot more confusion. There is a lot more uncertainty. And you know what you need in that time? You need a rock. You need something stable. You need something that's safe. And often when we're talking about a refuge, we're talking about a place where you have shelter from the storm. And it's like going inside of a cave uh, during in a mountainside during a, one of those brutal storms that can hit or that I've read about that can hit a mountain. Uh, so you can go inside the cave and stay dry and safe and warm. Uh, it can be, as well, there's other images of, of protection. Uh, a mother hen is one of the images that we'll see today. Because a mother hen keeps their chicks safe and at the same time keeps them warm and helps teach them in the way that they need to go. And those are definitely ways to combat fear, intimidation. And this is what we're talking about because we don't need to have or be bound by worry, anxiety, or fear. Despite what the world's telling you right now, you don't have to be bound by worry, anxiety, and fear because we have a God who takes, he's in charge. You know, I, I used to have some real um, deep set fears when I was a child, uh, before I became a Christian. And I had two specific fears and then there would be a third that uh, could affect me today. The two that I had as a child, one, I, I, I just, I remember, I didn't want aliens to come and take over the planet. Well, I read the Bible and I don't see aliens taking over the planet. Boy, that brings me a lot of comfort. I can go, that's not the way it's going to end. Cool. You know what? I used to also think about, I grew up in an era where nuclear war was something that was very real. And I remember going across the border into the United States and going to a Buffalo Sabres game. And it, it said on the side of the building, fallout shelter. And I thought, wow, if there's a nuclear attack, they have fallout shelters. And then I thought, but in Niagara on the Lake and, and where I live, and we don't have any shelters. If a nuclear bomb hits in Buffalo or Niagara Falls, I got nowhere to hide. Not that, that fallout shelter would really help if it was a direct hit. Those are fears I grew up with. You know what I found out in the Bible? That's not how the world ends. We don't destroy ourselves. 
And then to 21st century, we have a lot of talk. There are actually uh, young people nowadays sterilizing themselves at a very early age because they feel if they have a child, it's only going to bring the end closer because we can't really sustain what we're doing on this earth right now. You know what? I am not in favor of pollution. I am, I am in favor of taking care of the planet. But it's not because I'm afraid that this planet's going to be destroyed because of man's pollution. I do it because God commanded us to do that. In the beginning, in the book of Genesis, he asked us to tend the planet. And he never really took that command away. So we can tend the planet and bring honor to him through the way that we grow things. The way we consume things. Are you a massive consumer? Or can you tone it down? Can you temper how much you're consuming things? Can you buy local? I think that's honoring God. I'm not doing it because I'm afraid the world's going to end because of environmental doomsayers. Because that's not how the Bible ends. God says in the Bible at the end, he's going to end it when it's time. No worries. And that's a phrase that I, I say a lot. I borrow it from the Australians. No worries. Because we're not supposed to be people of fear and people of worry. So today's message is to encourage you in your confidence as God is our fortress. He is our refuge. He is our protector. Uh, let's get right into it now. We're going to turn to Psalm number 46. And there's lots of stories that'll back up some of these ones, but we're just going to read the actual Psalms. And some of them you're going to look like, isn't there a song about that? Yeah, probably there is. Hope you've gotten to Psalm 46 by now. I just flipped my page. It happened to be close to there anyways. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, and though the mountains shake with its swelling. And it says this word, sila, which means, or sela, which means stop, just think about this. If I was reading out on my own, I'd actually take a little more time to read it over again and stop and think about it. Uh, we don't have time for that today, but let's just stop and think about that. Even if there's environmental disasters going on, God is our refuge and our strength. We will not fear, even though the earth was removed and though the mountains fell into the sea. So it doesn't matter about the environmental issues. God is our refuge and a very present, he's not just going to be a future help, very present help in trouble. There's a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God's in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just as at the break of dawn. The nations raged and kingdoms were moved. He uttered his mouth, his voice, and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Salah. Stop and think about that. So even if there's all kinds of wars going on, nations are raging. And who are they raging? They're raging at each other and often raging against God. It says he uttered his mouth, and his voice, and the earth melted. We live in a day where there's a lot of political stuff that you can read and follow and get really absorbed in on the internet. I know this is something that I have to be careful with. It's like having bad candy. Um, and my own family will say, okay, stop watching the news for a while because it can drag you down. Uh, the amount of things that you see politically that are going on worldwide. Even if there is to the point where the nations are just raging and they're raging against God and putting it on his people, you know what it says? It says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. That's where we go to. He's the one that protects us. Not our ideology, not just our thinking. God himself is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. So it says here, come, let's take a look at what the Lord can do. He actually has been able to make wars cease. 
So here's three things that we can really um, be afraid of and cause a lot of disturbance in our life. The first, environmental issues. Disasters. We could be afraid of those. And even if we do, those things happen, we're not to fear because God's our strength. He's our refuge. Other thing, political turmoil. The nations could be raging. Yet, because we have given our lives to Jesus and he dwells within us, he's with us. He is with us. He's our refuge. And then the last thing, wars. And there's a lot of people that every time there's another war that happens, particularly in the Middle East, it's another sign that it's the end. And he will be exalted among the nations. He will be exalted in the earth. But we're supposed to focus more on the fact that the God of, the Lord of hosts is with us. Not just that he'll take care of things in the end. He is with us and he is our refuge. And notice that phrase comes up twice. What did I say about repetition? It's an emphasis. Come be, it says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So the same God that split the sea with the blast of his nostrils, one little sneeze from God and the Red Sea parted. And the people of Israel walked all the way through, and yet the Egyptian army drowned behind them. It's the same God that's with us. Same God that created the heavens and the earth with us. Same God that raised Jesus from the dead with us. Feeling a little better? You know what? There's a lot of people that are preaching doom and gloom. You might not be there yet. Uh, there's a lot of preachers that are like, Oh, Jesus must be coming soon because look how bad things are. And it's actually not that bad compared to even other parts of the world. They're not dying for Jesus. They're not going to jail for Jesus. Just because their political party didn't get into power, they're having a, hus a, a bit of a fit. Um, yes, there's definitely things that are going poor just because their economies are tanking. Oh, no. Um, you know what? God's bigger than all those things. I want to talk now uh, about a different picture. God, our protector. God, the one that that guides us and directs us and he's like a hiding place you ever feel like you just you just want to hide from all the stuff that's going on right now um i live in ontario regulations change almost weekly right now and there's definitely times where i just, I just want to hide I just, I just want to be done with it and, and just go hide i have a place to hide in fact i have a person to hide because he is my hiding place Psalm 91, and you can turn there. A hiding place that's safe. A hiding place that's secure. A lot of times even kids have that. They have a special place that they go to so that they can feel more secure. Even if you think of, of in Winnie the Pooh, there was a place where he would, where Christopher Robin would go to this hundred acre wood in his imagination. And it was a safe and a secure place. But even within there, he had a safe and secure place where he would sit with his his stuff there. We have way better than that. It's not just imagination. It is God himself. And by faith, we can hide in him. Psalm 91, he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I'll say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him, I will trust. Surely he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks about in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Think about all those images just for a minute. I know there's no break in this part, but I want us to just, let's think of some of those amazing images. That's what poetry is about, right? Poetry is about sparking your imagination and it's about building into, uh, or helping you get the, gain the emotion that the author is trying to teach you. So let's just go to the images and the, the poetry within this, the secret place of the most high. Wouldn't you like to have a secret hideout and it's just you and God? That's awesome. He's my refuge, so that rock that shelters us from the storm. He's my fortress. We don't even have fortresses in our, our armed forces so much anymore um, because we have other weapons. But imagine being in something like a fortress. The closest thing I can think of is a, a, a the B-17 flying fortress from World War II that had 
10 guns that could protect it from the enemy. And when you had multiple, uh, by the end, they would, they would have 1,000 bomber raids. That's 10,000 guns. You don't want to be one of the other guys trying to fight that. It's a fortress. And even more, imagine being literally like in one of those castles or a fortress, a place that's safe. And God's the one protecting you. He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. If you're a bird trap, that's what happens. The bird gets trapped and it can't get out. He lets you go. He gets you out of the traps you get into. And from the perilous pestilence, he delivers us from the plagues. He'll cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. That's that picture of, of a mother hen protecting and then it says, he'll be your shield and your buckler. He will be your shield. He will be the wall. Not only do you have a shield, but it's like having an extra wall of defense around you. Um, you shall not be afraid of terror at night, nor an arrow that flies by day, uh, nor of a, a pestilence or, or a disease that walks about in darkness or destruction that comes at daytime, noonday. It doesn't matter what time of day it is you can be in that secret hiding place with God. You got to trust him. You need faith for this. You need to activate the faith that is within you uh, to trust in God. A thousand, it goes on to say, a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you've made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor any plague come near your dwelling. For he should give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Wow. So it, doesn't, it says, no evil shall trip you up, and a plague won't come near your dwelling. He'll give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. So doing good or evil. God's there to help guide you. He'll send messengers. That's often what angels are, is messengers. Sometimes that's another person, another follower of Jesus, to say, hey, you're going to trip up. Get back straight on the path. Don't get stuck in a ditch. Don't get stuck in one of those things that's going to slow you down. Keep going for Jesus. And in their hands, these angels will bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. Stubbing your toe is inconvenient. Let's be honest. And that's what it's saying here. So we need doesn't mean we're, we're not going to stub our toe. It doesn't mean that we're not going to have these things happen, but he will protect us. It says, you'll tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you shall trample on their foot. It's one thing to trample on an old, decrepit lion. But it says here, the young lion. Now listen to what God himself says. Our refuge. Because he set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is an amazing passage. It says, he will set him, us on high. That doesn't mean on high in earthly realms. It means we get to be with him. Because it goes on to say, he'll call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. It doesn't say that trouble won't come. And that's one thing we've got to be aware of. When you give your life to Jesus and encouraging people to give their life to Jesus, you can't just promise and say, oh, with God, everything's going to be easier and life's going to be so much more simple and you're going to prosper in all your ways. No, there's more to it than that. And yeah, there's times where we will prosper. But the difference between us and someone else isn't that we're, our lives are that much better. Because that's not in the history of all of Christianity. But what the difference is, is no matter what, good or bad, God is with us. And you can tell that God is with us. Because we have a joy, we have a peace, we have a boldness, we have courage. Whether everyone else has fear. And it says, with long life I will satisfy him. You know, there's some people that can live, uh, in Ecclesiastes it says, a guy can live for thousand years maybe even two but if he's not satisfied it's worthless it's empty it's it's vain with long life i will satisfy him and show him my salvation so your life is satisfied because of him wow 
That's an amazing passage, isn't it? I hope you're feeling a little more encouraged uh, from all the doom and gloom that unfortunately is being preached in a lot of uh, a lot of churches today even. But I don't want, you know what? I'm not gonna be blind. Yeah, things look a little darker. Hey, you know what? The, if things get darker, do you know what that means? It means the light shines brighter. If you're outside in a sunshiny day, I've got a pretty bright day outside and I light a match, doesn't really show up all that much. But if it's dark and there's cloud cover at night, I light a match, you can see that match shine bright. So we might face some more darkness right now. Things are a little bleak. That's the time for the light to shine brighter. That should actually excite us, not get us down or depressed, or just be so fearful and hunker down and just sit still waiting for Jesus to come back. That's not his will for you. His will is never that we just say, thank you, Lord, I'm saved, so I'm just going to wait until I can be with you. Either you come back or I die. No, he wants us to be active for him and shine the light. He wants to reflect his light through us. Um, so let's just look at one more passage where it talks about how God is the one who helped train David and rescue him out of so many perilous times. And he does the same for us when we trust in him. Psalm 144 is where I'm asking you to turn. We'll find out that God is like a rock. God trains our hands to do what he wants us to do. He's the one that rescues us. Let's just get into it right now. Hopefully by, there, by now you've gotten there. If not, just follow along when you get there. Psalm 144. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle, my loving kindness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and the one in whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. David doesn't even have to, he just, God helps the people follow him. What an amazing passage. His high tower and deliverer. See, a high tower is even better than just being in a fortress because now you can see all the way around. Think of the, there's definitely been battles throughout the 20th century even where you need to hold the high ground. And uh, we, we can thank Canadians, it's, it's April. We just uh, had an anniversary of the Battle of Vimy Ridge, and April 9th is when that battle happened, where in many cases, if you're outside of Canada, you're like, well, what's Vimy Ridge? It's kind of a part of a much bigger campaign that was going on. But Vimy Ridge was a height where the Germans could see all over a plane and, and consistently bombard the Allied positions, and the French tried to take it, they failed. The British tried to take it, they failed. They gave the job to the Canadians, expecting them to fail as well, but it gave the Canadians something to do, and uh, they were good soldiers. But the Canadians went all out, and they actually asked everybody from a general to the lowest private, what failed? How come this didn't work with all the previous battles? And they thought, okay, we're going to do it differently. So every soldier participated. Every soldier knew his job, and then the job of some of the guys around him, and they won. They won the battle so handedly that if it wasn't for the fact that the terrain was completely blown to bits, they could have gotten through and penetrated through that massive line. But the whole battle was fought because the Germans had the high ground. That was the whole point. And so here's David saying, you are my high tower and my deliverer. We have the high ground in Christ. Lord, what is man that you take knowledge of him or the son of man that you're mindful of him? Man is like a breath. His days are like a passing shadow. Bow down your heavens, O Lord. Come down, touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Flash forth lightning, scatter them. Shoot your arrows and destroy them. Stretch out your hand from above. Rescue me and deliver me out of great waters. Whose mouth speaks lying words, and whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. So he's facing some people right now fighting him. And it's, he feels like it's almost, his enemies are like swirling great waters, but he knows, David's telling us, all that we face on earth from men is nothing compared to the power of God. I will sing a new song to you, O God, O God, on a harp of ten, spring, 
10 strings, I will sing praises to you. The one who gives salvation to kings, who delivers David his servant from the deadly sword. Rescue me and deliver me from the hand of foreigners, whose mouths speak lying words, whose right hand is a right hand of falsehood. So here's that, that picture again. People that trick you are always trying to trick you. Jesus did the same thing. He was delivered from all of his enemies because the Holy Spirit gave him the right words to speak at the right time to totally thwart. Remember the time where they asked him and said, oh, should we pay taxes to Caesar? And there's no answer that gets him out of this. Because if he says yes, then the Pharisees are mad. If he says no, then the Herodians get mad because the Pharisees didn't support Caesar and the Herodians did. So there's really, it's, it's a tough question. And he says, well, whose picture's on the coin? And they said, Caesar's. Well, give to Caesar what's Caesar's, but give to God. I, I always picture him kind of pointing near his heart what belongs to God. So rescue me from those people who has a right hand as the right hand of falsehood. That our sons may be plants growing up in their youth, that our daughters may be pillars sculpted in the palace style, that our barns may be full supplying all kinds of produce, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our fields, that our oxen may be well laden, that there be no breaking in or going out, that there be no outcry in our streets. Happy is the people who are in such a state. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. I just want to kind of conclude on this point here. Why are the people of God happy? Because he is their refuge. They have no reason to worry, no reason to fear. We can even think of things turned really dark and suddenly Christianity was illegal tomorrow and we were under serious persecution. Now they're monitoring our internet and they see something Christian and they knock on your door and they say, was this you that posted this? You know what? Even if we die, we still win because we still have God. He is our refuge. He is our protector. Our life is connected to his life because he has made us new on the inside. So if you have been struggling with fear, uh, if you've been struggling with confusion, we don't even need to have confusion. All we need to do is be in the refuge. We don't even need to know all of what the storm is doing. When you're in the refuge, the storm could be raging. I, we could even think of the story of Elijah who went into a cave First of all, he's fleeing away from the woman that was trying to destroy him, Queen Jezebel. But he's in this cave and there's a massive storm. And then there's a firestorm and all these, and an earthquake. And it was then that he heard a still small voice saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? I got more for you to do. Inside the refuge, we're safe. We don't even need to be looking outside the refuge and look at the storm. We can just, not that we don't know that the storm's going on. It's obvious the storm's going on. It's obvious that darkness is growing in strength in some areas. But you know what? God wins. In fact, Jesus has already won on the cross the major victory. Because sin and death were defeated. Now we can have life on the inside that leads us to eternal life with God at the end. So no wonder it says here, happy are the people who are in such state. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. So no matter what kind of circumstances you are facing right now, I pray that God would be able to use poetry like this and other messages, stories, the word of God and song to remind you, he is the one that we can be hidden within. He is the rock, he is our refuge, and he is our shield. So Lord, that you would re just reveal that to people today and that we could be happy because we are in you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thanks for joining me. Pray that God bless you this week, amen. Take care. Oh.
拜拜。